Hi, I'm Pete Moran. Um, I'm with Mach 49, but before that I've had 20 plus years building a firm called DCM Ventures from scratch in the late 1990s up to more than five billion under management today. And along the way, I've had the privilege of funding many companies, but perhaps more importantly, working with several of the best corporate venture capital firms it, throughout the industry. I have the privilege today of introducing Nicholas. I first met Nicholas last summer when they were just launching TDK Ventures. And at that point in time, they had only funded one company. Since then, I've had a chance to work more intensively with him as an advisor to the fund. But I have to say, this is the most impressive launch of a corporate venture capital firm ever. You know, one of the things that stands out to me most is how methodical that they've been throughout this process of making sure to involve each of the constituencies that's important. They're well networked within TDK, making sure they're worrying about the various corporate needs, but as well, as soon as they find an entrepreneur, they make sure that they're finding the best ways to connect that entrepreneur within the corporation, as well as being helpful with other companies. And I've seen them now deliver value, most importantly to the companies they've invested in, but even for some of the companies that they chose not to invest in. And then finally, they're actively building their network, both with some of the other CBCs that we have here today, as well as I know they're one of the, the, you know, the highest regarded firms among several of the, the leading firms on Sand Hill Road. You know, I look forward to hearing what Nicholas has to, sh to share today. Um, in many ways, the, the methodical approach that he has put into building this over the last two years now, I think is gonna come across and might serve as a great reference point for all of us as we think about how to make sure we're building the most effective corporate venture capital organizations uh, throughout, you know, in our respective companies in the years to come. So with that, Nicholas. Thank you, Pete. I, all these words means a lot to me. I, I'm very privileged to have you as a mentor. And I just want to today to really uh, share the learnings uh, along the way of creating these corporate VCs. And in a way, I've shaped this presentation as a presentation I wished I had when I started the project. So the idea is to go chronologically and try to share most, the most important lessons and basically split as top five lessons for special moments along the journey. So the first is a quick intro, who we are, TDK Ventures is technology focused. We have $50 million found and we want to really help entrepreneurs to deliver their mission. And uh, you can see the team here. The first five people on this slide are in the founding team and Paul Holland, who works really closely with Pete at Mac 49, but was also general partner at Foundation Capital, has been what we have coined general partner in residence. And that was a key element actually to everything that you're going to see. And Xiaotong on the right is actually our first recruit during COVID-19. And it was really good to see that all the best practices that we have applied to ourselves has helped her to really ramp up quickly and be very helping right away. So let's start with uh, talking about the portfolio companies. We have done 11, two we have not announced, but maybe soon. Uh, and you can see it's very diverse. And this is actually part of what we are trying to do at TDK Ventures. So how did we get started? First, the ID, the very ID started at Stanford Executive Program uh, back in July 2018. And when I was in a classroom with Jesper Jorensen on uh, open innovation, he basically explained why you need to do a corporate VC. And it's all about exploring. And then from that point on, the idea started and I thought, okay, if TDK doesn't have a corporate VC, we should consider it. And I went and spent a lot of time going to different class, learning about VCs. And then I had a class probably two weeks later with Ilya Strebulov, where he actually told us all the reasons why corporate VCs don't work and fail. And that was really like the cold shower. It was like, oh, okay. And then I was very lucky because a week later, I met with Linda Yates and Paul Holland at Mac49 who presented, yes, it's true, there are many reasons corporate VCs don't work, but if you follow best practices and you're very conscious about it and you're very uh, diligent about it, it works. So my first top five lessons here is really be clear about the why you want to do a corporate VC. In our case, it was about exploration, going to learnings about new markets where we don't have the technology. Learn as much as possible about venture capital. Go as, uh, to the events, learn from the best. This is really, really important. 
but also know the pitfalls, know what not to do. This is so important to know that. And of course, learn the best practices, what to do, and really try to incorporate them in everything you're doing and thinking. And that means you need to find these friendly experts. And this is my lesson number five here, is be careful who are the friendly experts. Some people will say they know a lot about VCs, they don't know so much. And what I liked about Paul and what I liked about Pete is they were general partners for decades. They know the job. They really can be coach and mentors like no one else. So be sure to choose really well your friendly experts. Next, in August, so that was two weeks after the Stanford program, I was back in TDK. You can see me next to the TDK logo. And these two slides you see here is, uh, are the slides that I showed two weeks after the program. And I wanted really to explain the exploration versus exploitation, the why we wanted to, I wanted to do a corporate VC, but also where it fits within the strategy of a company and all the constituents, like Pete mentioned, that needs to be included. And so here the lesson that I really want to share is focus on the why you want to do a corporate VC and stick to it. It's really important you keep explaining why you want to do it so that people can at least understand where you're coming from visually show where it fits in the company existing organization. And that's why I had this bubble with all the different groups because you want to show where you play a role, where you can contribute and engage very widely in the organization. You really want to engage in the organization and make sure that anyone that actually can contribute or give feedback, they do. And that also means you're going to get a lot of no. I had my share of no's. But when I received the no, it's a bit like a sales process. Ask why clarification questions and you would find that a lot of times the no actually are not a no it's a no on a very specific point you're very flexible about and then the next two slides are also from the same time uh, which also shows my proposed approach which was very staged so there was the align plan launch and expand so i was already talking about form number two even before we even agreed to do a corporate vc and the phase number one, which was the planning, was actually only for one quarter, October to December of 2018. But I was already showing a lot of details about what mattered for us to agree on. And of course, the expansion was about end of 2020, where I wanted to set the expectations. So here's the top five lessons here of that moment is show a stage approach and make sure it's a wide consultation. It's really, really important to do that. Uh, two, set the expectations about the milestones, the timing of the milestones, because that allows you to come back to people and say, as I plan to tell you, or as we agree to do it, and then it gives you an excuse to come back, but also to get progress and to continue to, um, to, to go along the milestones that you have defined. Uh, but set expectations on the important details, even if they would change later. You would have seen in the slide I was mentioning about a fund of $25 million. We ended up with 50. It could have ended up with 100 or different things, but at least you start setting some expectations so you can get feedback on these small details. And you show a roadmap beyond the first song because you want to show that you're ambitious not to create a corporate VC, but the why, and this is really for the long term. And at TDK, we are ready for the long term. We want to help entrepreneurs, but we want to be with them for a long, long time. So the idea is not to do it for two years. It's really about the roadmap. And Maybe the most important lesson of that time is a lot of time for feedback. Make sure that people have a chance to give you feedback and they don't feel pressurized to give you feedback quickly. And then, importantly, show that you adjust your plan accordingly. Show that you've listened and then you give the feedback saying thank you for telling me about this because now I understand and I check with other CVCs and indeed that's how they do it. So make sure that you show how you adjust your plan with that feedback. Now, fast forward to December 2018, the same year, is when I had a chance to present to TDK CEO, Ishiguro San, about the plan to do the corporate VC. I was only given a very high level uh, uh, goal, which is present the corporate VC ID and you have 20 minutes to do it. And so what I decided to do is, I'll only present for seven minutes and the rest is Q&A. And the four slides you show, you, you can see here, are the ones I presented to Ishiguro San. Four out of the seven I presented. And back to exploitation, exploration, explaining the why on the top left. The bottom left was actually about showing the corporate development and the corporate VCs, how they work together and how they can augment each other. 
And you can see, you, maybe you can't see, but on the left, the two left slides, the background is a Stanford picture because that came from what I learned during the Stanford program. On the right side, you can also see the background is two uh, waves. One is very calm and the other one is a big wave. And that was on purpose. The top was a challenge, explaining why we wanted to do the corporate VC, which is about learning about new ecosystems and how we can uh, attract the next wave of customers beyond our core competencies and new services and experiences we want to deliver to them. But again, within the TDK mission of contributing to society. The bottom uh, right is about the charter I was defining, which is showing where the business group people were. And this was this nice surfer that looked very happy surfing that big wave. And then you had the R&D and m and which was on the next side, is a new technology or new market. And TDK Ventures was new market and new technologies. And of course, the visual was important because it shows like a big wave of disruption was going to slam this poor uh, guy in the business group. And so here's the five lessons I would like to share is present to the CEO after you had a very wide alignment with all the key stakeholders. This is really important that when you come to the CEO, you have really made sure that you have everyone who understand what you're trying to do and they have all had a chance to give you feedback. And my presentation was focused on the why. So my lesson 17 and 18 is really focus on the why and don't present the what, the who, the how much. This is not important. This is the why you need to have a clear alignment at that level. And yet, you need to show where the corporate VC will fit within the organization. You can't leave that out. It has to be very clear how it works with the m and groups, the R&D groups, the business group. And, and the last one, which I, I try to explain in these four slides, is use visuals. Because the visuals tell the story. And it would be helpful for people to understand what you're trying to achieve and to remember visually about it. Then the next month after the CEO, so maybe I should say that, but at the end of that presentation, the CEO looked at the full room and said, this is exactly what I want. So from that point, it was clearly in full execution mode. And so in January, um, I decided to do what I call the CVC Summit. And I had the help of Paul Holland from Mac49, who really helped me to invite top people, both from VCs and CVCs. And I had DV from TDK also helping me to invite Ben Yu from Sierra Ventures, which was really cool because we had this opportunity for many people inside TDK, from the InventSense CEO, from uh, EVPs, and, and many other people that was really important, including the m and teams, to come and to listen, not to me, but to listen to people who practitioned, um, and both CBCs and VCs. And we, I always ask open question. I was asking, what would be the reason we would fail? What advice do you recommend we, we follow? And one of the best advice I heard actually, and that we use to this day, and nearly every day we use it, is a king of the hill concept, which Ben Yu from Sierra Ventures basically told about. It. And, and that was a really powerful message because it, it, it helped us to crystallize something that we, we, we thought about, but really helped us to become a criteria for our investments. So here in these lessons, I want to say, don't be afraid when you're in execution mode to invite VCs and CVCs to tell you what you should know. Don't assume you know something. Uh, and invite all the key stakeholders. Don't try to keep it secret. Really invite as many people as, as you can to listen to these practitioners. And of course, listen actively, adjust your plan accordingly, uh, and look for these gold nuggets. And these gold nuggets, like the king of the hill from Benny, was really a gold nugget because it helps you to actually know what to do and what not to do. Uh, and try to invite and to follow uh, meeting with them, with these future partners. So Sierra Ventures is clearly a, an amazing VC that we want to keep working on, so we selected them on, a, on purpose also. We wanted to make sure this was the start of a, a very meaningful partnership. So now I want to move to uh, a week later, and this is where I have a lot of gratitude for the GCV organization because I had the training, two-day training, which is a, called Today Intelligent Corporate Venturing Interactive Workshop, which helped me to learn about the, uh, the how to do CV, uh, CVCs. And then I uh, attended the Montre event, uh, where I had a chance to network with so many people. And this is the, the biggest yearly CVC event that I could find. And this was amazing because I met so many people that really gave me advice. Um, so here's the top five lessons is Start learning the job, especially if you're like me, you have never done corporate VC before. Uh, start networking even before you launch. You really need to start 
uh, networking and meeting people and listening to them as early as possible. And then go where the best VCs and the best CVCs give their keynote. Uh, if they give a keynote somewhere, then it's actually a good event to go. This is for me a, a clear criteria. Uh, but be humble. Uh, and here I want to say that Jon Snow, you know nothing. And this is really what I felt is I, I knew nothing and I had to listen to everyone and I had to make my mind about what made sense and what didn't make sense. Uh, and then plan to follow up meetings with all these people you meet because some of them are just incredible people and they are willing to pay forward and to help you to learn and know what to do and, and to do. Now I'm moving to April 2019 where actually I presented to the executive committee and the board of directors of TDK for the formal approval of the fund, the execution, the budget, the $50 million fund. So here you see four slides that I actually presented on the day. One is actually about the organization, who is in the team, the fact I report directly to the CEO of TDK, the fact we have three people are in an investment committee so we can make very fast decisions. Like for example, in June, we invested in Grok. From first meeting to investment and, and transferring the money was 25 days. That doesn't happen without the support of a great organization and a great investment committee. And that's how we designed it. And that was part of the feedback we learned from many people, including Mike49. But also how you get all the TDK teams to support uh, the organization and TDK Ventures and the ecosystem. You can see I just mentioned Mike49. One slide was actually to show that Paul Holland was going to help us. And that gave a lot of confidence to our board of directors that we had someone, and I use the term golf teacher because in Japan golf is a big thing, uh, that he was going to tell us the best practice early versus trying to do by ourselves, not do well, and then it becomes very hard to learn the best practices and you've lost all credibility along the way. Uh, you can see one slide which was about the investment thesis so that the board of directors and the executive committee knew what we were going to do, but also some very, very high level examples about what was in scope and what was not in scope, but not examples of a company, but examples of a space. And so here the top five lesson is only present to the exec, uh, to, for an approval after you've had this very wide alignment. It's not because the CEO said that's what he wants, that everything is defined. You really need to define it and to have a really uh, all the constituents of your company uh, involved in that process. Uh, but and this is a really important lesson. Every single time reminds you why you want to do it. In our case, it was exploration, going into new markets and learning this. So you've seen a few slides that look like a mountain and a helicopter. The mountain is where TDK is and trying to go to the top of that mountain where they have other competitors trying to do the same and the mountain could be the top, could be revenue or profit or customer delight to define it. Our job is this little helicopter going to different mountains, learning about the ecosystem, coming back with the information. And I keep explaining this analogy because it was a very good analogy for the why that we wanted to do this corporate VC. Now, of course, when you get to the board of directors presentation, you really need to present the where, the what, the who, how much, all of these details need to be really clear because you're getting an approval on that. Uh, and you need to demonstrate, like I mentioned, uh, that you have outside friendly experts who are going to help you and make sure that you actually have a very, very good start. And on the investment example, it's very important you stay at very high level. So it's not something that people will start asking questions and then you end up you're not being prepared. So keep it very high level on the example of what's in scope and out of scope. Fantastic. Okay, thank you. <laughs>
for recruitment, look for diversity of sorts. Many people talk about diversity, but the best way I, I describe it for me is I'm looking for people who are thinking differently from me and thinking differently from each other. And part of this, is, this diversity of thought means that you're going to be able to look at different angles for an investment, and that's going to drive really good discussions. So one of the things that I did was for my two uh, first investment directors, I looked at people who didn't come from corporate VCs. I didn't need this bias of what it was done before because I had Paul Holland to help me with that. So I really wanted people who have different view of looking at things. Don't delay the recruitment, that's a big lesson. Don't wait two or three months and then you end up with no capacity to actually work with the startups you want to help. So be very responsive to entrepreneurs means you have the team behind. Communicate on vision, ambition, and also on the fact you have friendly experts during your recruitment. I can tell you that the fact we had Paul uh, behind us and to help us really gave confidence to uh, Anil and Andrew that we were going to do it the right way. And when you're new as a corporate VC to find really good people to join you, this is really important that they feel confident you're going to follow the best practices and you have a good shot to be, like Pete one, uh, mentioned, to be really doing it well. Uh, over communicate on the why. When you recruit, when you talk to partners on the website, really over communicate on the why. This is all you have when you start and you launch. So really make sure that you over communicate on the why. And ensure the website and the show, social media is ready and on message. Now, moving on, uh, July and August is actually where we launched and we did our first investment. And here you can see two slides. One is actually the launch we did and we did it in a really cool place in uh, Palo Alto at the Foundation Capital Office. And we had Ara from uh, uh, DBL, managing partner. We had uh, Lex, uh, CEO of Starship. We had Invencent CEO, all presenting about the vision and why they thought it was good for TDK Ventures to be uh, part of the ecosystem. And of course, uh, Lex as the CEO of Starship, our first portfolio company, telling what he liked about us. And the second slide is really about the Starship kickoff meeting, which we did, which was the very first time that we had a kickoff meeting, first investment, and we really set the bar very high. We really wanted to make it really good for Starship. And so you see pictures of many people. We had about 20 people from TDK across a dozen teams. And all these colors you see on the slide is all the different teams and different products which could contribute uh, to Starship. And of course, there was no obligation on Starship to consider any of it. It was all what we call TDK goodness, what they could decide to use if they wanted. So here's a lesson I want to say is start looking for investment opportunities even before you launch. Uh, but you need very strong strategic and the synergy is fit. So make sure that you have that, but don't wait for the launch to start looking, start earlier. Um, so in this case, we launched July 1st officially, but actually we were talking to Starship even before that. Uh, integrate the business line and the important executive in your investment decisions. Uh, make sure that they understand why we decided to invest in Starship, why we decided not to invest in another company. The, uh, accept all this dialogue, really be open about it and welcome this dialogue and even pushback is really good at this point. Demonstrate to VCs and CVCs you know the pitfall and the best practices. So this is during the launch we were making really uh, a lot of time we explained why we, we understood the best practices and we understood the pitfalls but we wanted to learn more. And this is back to the John Snow you know nothing. You really have to assume that you know nothing and you have to really learn from all these experts. And when I look at Pete, who has two decades of experience, to me, this is like I'm at 1% and maybe in 10 years, I would be at 50% if I'm really lucky. That's basically what I'm looking at. Uh, go the extra mile, deliver what I call the mothership value or what we call internally TDK goodness with your first portfolio company. Two reasons. The first reason is that it's very, very important for your first portfolio company to really get a lot of value and it gives a really good reference. But also it, it sets the bar for the second investment, the third investment, the fourth investment. You've already got the process of a, of a, a kickoff meeting, who to invite, they liked it, they will want to come back. So make sure that the first kickoff meeting is your best ever and then you just raise the bar afterwards. And then make sure that you, you time your launch not when you have something to say, but when your partners have something to say. So if we didn't have Ira and Lex 
and Beirut to say something really good about us, we would not have launched. We would have waited until we had something really good for our partners to say about us. Now, we, we start talking about more the implementation, but that's really important to finish with this, which is the KPIs. So here you can see two slides, which is really about what are the processes that we set in place, and to the orange part is really about what uh, good financial VCs have to do, and it's all about the deal flow and looking at the investments and deciding which ones to go for, and then of course making the pitch and the execution of it. But then the blue box is really about what a good corporate VC should be. And again, this is about the why, but it's about how much value you can bring back to the organization. And therefore, we define the KPIs into six KPIs, three and three. Three, which was about how, to, how do we do a really good financial VC? And the next three was about how do we do a really good corporate VC? That was really important for us to make sure that we were not two in one direction or two in the other. And so you can see on this slide, the KPI, the number one KPI was about net promoter score for the entrepreneurs. One to 10, how likely would they recommend us to other entrepreneurs? And that was really important because it was all about making sure we were entrepreneur friendly and entrepreneur first. So here my lesson is set up your processes early. As soon as you have your team, make sure that you discuss with the team and you agree on these KPIs and your processes. And, and one, one tip I want to say, because I learned so many times, it's very important for VCs to do well, allow to be wrong so that you can be right when others are wrong. So make sure that this diversity of thoughts you really leverage. So for example, in our process, I do not have a veto right. I'm the president of TDK Ventures, but I do not have a veto right. If the investment director is well researched, passionate, convinced, he can do uh, the investment proposal, and that's exactly what you want. You want one person who is so sure that we can be right when most people are wrong. Ensure everyone, team, company, stakeholders embrace the why. So the KPIs, the goals, the processes is all back to this why. Making sure this is really about exploration and all these learnings back to the mothership. I recommend that this is the best practice for any organization to minimize the KPIs. And I think if you go beyond six KPIs, you start to lose the meaning of them. But also make sure you are very clear about the true North KPI, which one is number one. And I always come back to this NPS score because for me, this is really what drives all the right behaviors that we've done so far. Uh, and ensure everything you do, everything you do aligns with this vision, with this KPI, and with, of course, corporate venture best practices and financial VC best practices. And my last lesson, and this is what we've done in the first six, seven months. The first, we, we were planning for three months, but it became four months, was building the muscle, learning how to do the job. And, and every week we had Paul and later we had Pete and Kevin really uh, listening to our pitch from Anil and Andrew and just telling us how to think about an investment, how to uh, deep, deep, uh, deep dive, how to know who to ask to get really the best feedback, how to think about an investment, how to think about the market itself. So there was a lot of things that we really needed and that was building the muscles. And then the following three months, but you could argue it's still continuing to this day, is building the reflexes, going faster and faster so that you have more time for the one you really, really want to deep dive, to really go into depth and make sure that you invest. And, and maybe this is my final learning, which is it's very, very hard when you spend so much time to look at an investment, to eventually decide not to, but if it's for the right reason you decide not to, it's actually you learning really to do the job well. So with that, I've finished all my 50 lessons of uh, what we learned setting up the corporate VCs and I look forward to discussion with Pete. That was, that was fantastic. Nicholas, I gotta say, that's one of the most content-rich presentations I've ever heard on any subject. Um, I do have a few questions I just wanna follow up with. You know, with 50 lessons, are there, three that stick out that you suggest people you know focus most on those three or is it really more about going through all 50 in an ordered way so the way i i, I organize this presentation is really because depending on where you are in the formation of the corporate vc some matters more than others i think the one that really will matter no matter what is to be very clear about your why yep. in our case it's about exploration but maybe for the companies it's about acquisition or uh, any other reasons like becoming a customer yeah. and, and Intel Capital has different whys than we have. 
Um, so I think that would be a, a very generic one, which is you have to be very consistent in your messaging about the why. I think the second one I would say is it's all about people. So I would say number, one, number two is really about this recruitment, making sure that you choose people who are going to be entrepreneur first, who are going to be respectful, who are going to be uh, motivated to do the right thing. And the DNA of TDK is about contributing to society. So you really want to have people who feel that way. Um, but also this diversity of thought. So in a way, and Paul really helped me for that because initially I was set on doing what most VCs do, which is to have a principal and to have an associate. Yeah. And, and I found Anil and Andrew and I was like, how do I choose? They, they, <laughs> they are different from me and both are different from each other, but both should be a uh, principal or investment directors. And Paul removed any guilt to uh, go ahead with two investment directors because actually at Foundation Capital, we have one team that has been outperforming and they had two principals. Yeah. And so that really allowed me to go very quick on, on this uh, recruitment. Um, the third one I think is really about making sure that you see, uh, so Jim Adler did an interview uh, recently which was really good about corporate VC and he had this really good analogy about corporate VC is this membrane between the inside of the organization and the outside. Yep. And you want to make sure that you are really, really close to the external and to the internal and you find a way to, to, to share this information and to help the startups while sharing back information to, to the mothership. And I, I thought that was a really good analogy because it's very, very easy to be focused on too much on one or the other. Yes. And so I would say that would be the third really big one to be important is uh, align widely, get a lot of uh, time internally, but also make sure that whatever you do will make sense for entrepreneurs. Do not think that if it's good for TDK or for your mothership, it's good for the startups and vice versa. You need to find a way where you really make sure the entrepreneurs are going to be more successful because you are investing in them. Yeah. And then maybe, you know, what I heard from the very end of your presentation is if, if there's a guiding metric once you're done with all this, it really comes down to net promoter score. Is that... So, so I used to be worldwide sales at NXP Software. And I, I looked at so many metrics and I really believe that net promoter score is a very good uh, proxy for future success. And if I, I used to have a very provocative sentence when I was uh, in charge of sales. I used to say, I don't care about our customers. I care about their success. And what that meant is I didn't want my sales guy to just spend a good time with my customers and they would be happy. I wanted them to think about how do we make them more successful? What kind of product could help them? What kind of solution would help them? And that would actually delight the customers on top of making them more successful. And I feel like the Net Promoter Score is giving us a very good chance to think about what is going to be really helpful for the entrepreneurs to be more successful. And so we have actually, we use Monday.com as a tool for collaboration. And we have one of the boards that is all about what we call TDK goodness. So all our portfolio company and every time we give uh, what we think is a TDK goodness and the portfolio company say, oh, wow, thank you, this is great, we add it. And I think we are now at probably 50 or 60 TDK goodness across all our portfolio companies. And, and it's very interesting because it's not that we need to document it, but because we can start to see being added, we start to feel good about it and it's like a, a positive reinforcement. And sometimes we see that one portfolio company has fewer TDK goodness and we're like, it's time to do better for these guys. And so this is a really good visual way of making sure that we're thinking about adding value but adding value from their perspective. So they have to say, yep. yes, that was, yep. if they don't actually think it was useful, we don't add it to that board. Yep. But it builds up positive culture from early on. I like that. It's all about behaviors and motivation. And we're very lucky because TDK is really a company that loves entrepreneurs and they understand the challenge of creating your startup and going through all the hurdles of alpha customers, pivot, beta customers. Yep. And so Ishiguro san our CEO, is always saying that it's about the entrepreneurs. And the reason he personally wanted to do this corporate VC was to help startups in material science, which normally doesn't get a lot of funding, yeah. to get funded. Right. So it was really from the really good reasons that it was started. You know, with, with 50 different lessons that you went over there, I certainly hope you are going to make this available to, to folks, a, an actual copy of the 50 lessons so they can study it more at their... Yeah, yeah. I think we will, we will be sharing the fuller video on YouTube. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure that our marketing team will find a way to place it in the right YouTube place. But yes, I think the, 
like I said, I'm trying to do a presentation which I, w I, I so wished I could have had access to when I started. Yeah. Because you feel very alone when you start this. Yeah. You have an idea, you know it makes sense, but you don't know how to start and what to do. And I'm hoping that my experience that I put and articulate into these lessons is helpful for people. Maybe some lessons are not helpful, but maybe a few will be. Yeah. And as long as a few will be, then it's very um, good for helping raise the bar in the industry which corporate VC didn't necessarily have good, yeah. uh, good uh, reputation in the past. And, and at the end, if any CVC start to act badly, it's actually not good for everyone else. Okay. Uh, we've seen that recently with um, um, Amazon, which was rumored to be sharing information they should not. I actually don't think they did that, but just uh, perception that it could happen doesn't uh, go well with entrepreneurs. So you really need to make sure that you are above board and you really raise the bar anytime yes. you can. Absolutely. You know, one of the things that I think many of the folks in the audience today are either setting up a CDC for the first time or they're in the middle of deploying their first fund. And one of the things that, that you mentioned that I, I probably surprised some of them is you're talking about already sowing the seeds for that second fund. Yeah. How do you find the time in what's gotta be a crazy busy, you know, how do I execute on the first fund to think about sowing the seeds for the future. So again, it's back to the why. We are looking at, at contributing to society. We are looking at exploring new mega trends that TDK wants to go into in the future, like health and wellness and industrial IoT and so on. And we really want to learn as much as possible. So we already know where to go. And um, what we are trying to do for the second fund, we have discussions about how do we make it even more meaningful for environment transformation. So our first fund was really focused on digital transformation and energy transformation. And we will continue, no doubt. But we are looking at how can we make it even more uh, around environment transformation. So maybe even a stronger focus there. And so if you think about the why, then it starts to be like, okay, we want a maximum impact and we're starting to see some impact, although it takes five to 10 years to really yeah. see the full impact. But we have really good, uh, uh, early proof point that we are in the right path and we are getting uh, positive feedback including yep. from you that this is the right way for us to proceed. So we are trying to get the second fund within this time frame, this, this uh, goal of delivering even more uh, to the entrepreneurs and really contributing more to society. Okay. Um, you know, when we get up here, we always talk about things as if everything always goes right. But literally the first night I met you was at the launch party um, last, you know, August or so of last year, so maybe, you know, 14 months ago. And as I recall, there was a typhoon that unexpectedly hit Japan and yep. delayed some of your, you know, your corporate executive officers from coming over to attend the launch. Talk about, you know, how do you deal with it when, when there's a sudden major wrinkle in your, in your plans here? Yeah, so well, like any startups, you, uh, you take the constraints as they are and then you look at how you do the best with a certain situation. So in this case, it was going to be Shiguru San and the full executive team coming to this launch. We had uh, Beru, the CEO of Team Vincent, who came and presented and did the speech of Ishiguru San. Um, and we were very lucky that everyone else who was local or coming from the East Coast could still make it. And, and to be honest, it was an amazing launch because we had partners there from the VC and CVC community. But we also, and this is really meaningful, we had one of our portfolio company talking about it and telling what they liked about us. And that gave us even more inspiration. Well, thank you. You know, Nicholas, I've heard so many great points today and I really think it's important that people have a chance to study the, the detail here. But just to highlight some of the things I heard you, you focus on was, you know, what's the why early on in the process? Second, the importance of the team. And then finally, focusing on creating a membrane that serves both the corporation and the entrepreneur and has fluidity to how information and ideas move back and forth. But, you know, frankly, I think we're doing a disservice if I don't highlight at least one other point, which is on top of all this, you have to have a great leader. And, and Nicholas really has been that. You know, the leader here has to have the idea, the concept in the beginning, but you know, there were many challenges along the way. And it sounded a little easy the way he laid it all out, but you have to have resilience. You have to be somebody who hears no and, and just use that as, how do I get you to a yes? 
um, somebody that can provide the guiding light and can work at all levels of the organization and then can work to build a brand new organization, a brand new part of the corporation that has very important constituencies in the entrepreneurs and in the other investors in the economy. And, you know, frankly, Nicholas, you, you've done a, a phenomenal job of that, but I think anybody else that's trying to walk in your shoes and build their own CBC, you know, it's important that you start with a great leader or you're gonna run into you know, challenges and, and not be as successful as TDK Ventures is, is often the path to be. Well, coming from you, it uh, means a lot. Thank you. Thank you.